Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a radio install in this 2012 Ford F-250 slash F-350. In this install, we're going to show you how to remove this radio and upgrade it with an aftermarket doubled-in touchscreen Pioneer. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do to get this radio on out is first and foremost, remove the trim up and around the radio. Now it's a good idea to make sure your CDs are pulled out of the disc slot because once the radio is removed, it's very difficult to do so. Um, so the first thing we need to do is actually these two panels down here are hiding two 932nd screws or you probably get away with about a seven millimeter. We have a little panel tool. We're gonna just go ahead and work these panels on free. They're just held on with clips just like so. Then you'll notice there's two screws there. Go ahead and remove those. Let's go ahead and disconnect our power socket as well as our aux and USB socket here. With that out of the way, the rest of the panel is just held on with clips. I like to kind of grab from the bottom. Just kind of work it loose here. All right, so with that out of the way here, we can actually just kind of pull it down without totally disconnecting it if we don't need to. And there's gonna be two more screws there up and around the radio. Go ahead and remove those. All right, go ahead and pull the radio. From this point, make sure you disconnect your harnesses here. Now most of these harnesses are and with little tabs, just push the little tab. It should pop on out. Okay, so with the radio removed, at this point, let's head over to the bench and show you all the parts that we need for this install. This video is sponsored by Crux Interfacing Solutions, an excellent location for radio replacements, camera interfaces, and more. Check out cruxinterfacing.com to start planning your next install today. Okay, so the parts that we have chosen to go with for our Ford install today, first and foremost, we chose to go with this Pioneer Wireless CarPlay Android Auto Radio. This is the AVHW4400NEX um, to make that compatible with the wiring in our vehicle. We have partnered with this Crux wiring interface adapter, the SWRFD-60. This kit here retains steering wheel controls and the factory subwoofer aux also retains both the analog and the CAN bus version of steering wheel controls so it's a great kit to go with and then the other parts here we need a dash kit a doubled in kit which we've chosen to go with this metro 95-5812 doubled in kit because we want to retain the factory ford sync uh, usb input we've gone with this pack uh, usb gm10 adapter to keep the factory USB functional. And finally, we have an antenna adapter, which we'll post this partner down in the description. Now, we're, because we're doing a Pioneer, we've also chosen to go with the micro bypass unit, uh, which will allow for certain settings and video playback while in motion. So these are our basic parts that we're gonna go with here today. Let's go ahead and grab our wiring harness adapter from our Pioneer and our adapter that connects into our factory plugs behind the factory radio and get those soldered up. Okay, so what we've done here is we've grabbed our Crux harness adapter and we grabbed our Pioneer harness and what we've done is we've stripped both ends across both sides. Now before we get this soldered up, we put on the heat shrink on the Pioneer side. So once those connections have been made and cooled, we can move those heat shrink tubes up and over those connections and we'll shrink them down with the heat gun. So what we're going to do basically here is match up color for color. Um, we're going to make those connections and then show you any special connections that we've made for your install. Okay, so we went ahead and got our connections all soldered up. Now speaker wire colors, the whites, grays, greens, and purples, both with the solid as well as the black stripe. Those are all straightforward color to color. We got those all soldered up here. 
the parking brake wire on the Pioneer, put it to our bypass here. Constant, that's all hooked up, that's your yellow. Now your amplifier turn on, what we did is our bypass required an amplifier turn on, so we connected that into the blue white wire. Um, we also connected into the blue white wire of our harness here, so that went through. And we left a little lead off, just an extra wire in case we had an amplifier down the road. Um, just for easy and accessibility there. Uh, we got our ground hooked up, so our micro bypass required a ground. We also grounded it to our main harness as well. And we left another harness lead off just in case we need an easy access to a ground. Now, we also hooked up our uh, reverse trigger wire, which is purple white. We got that all wired in as well to the crux harness adapter, color for color. Now this one doesn't match straight up. This is our illumination, which is solid orange on the crux and on our Pioneer, it's orange white. Our vehicle speed sense is pink and those connected straight across. And then finally, our red is our accessory turn on and that went in, but we also wired in our solid blue off our main harness here for the crux side because that's our power antenna as well and it needs a trigger to trigger the power antenna amplifier to operate so we just tied that into our accessory so at this point with all our connections made here what we're going to do is move our heat shrink up and over those connections then we'll use a heat gun to shrink those tubes okay so at this point our harness is cooled what we're going to do is wrap our harness with some tessa tape here just to protect the wiring a little bit more in the dash also provides a nice clean professional look. So we're gonna go ahead and get our rat harness all wrapped up. And that really completes at this point um, our harness connections here. Next thing that we'll need to do is get our radio mounted in the dash kit. Okay, so at this point we went ahead and finished wrapping our harness. Uh, we're all good to go. This end will plug into the back of the Pioneer. These ends will plug, in, plug into the factory plugs. We left out um, and a remote turn on wire in the ground just in case we need them. We just threw some butt connectors on there as well. Uh, this is for our factory subwoofer. This will go into the sub output of our radio. Um, we plugged in our brain box here. We have our steering wheel controls now this does look like an aux but actually goes into the wr input on the back of the radio um, for our steering wheel control functionality the other harness that is off we will not actually use this because our vehicle has the uh, cam bus version it's the digital version it's not the analog version so we'll leave that on off there harness is all good to go next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the dash kit on the radio Okay, so pretty easy kit to assemble. Side pieces just click into the faceplate and then you screw the faceplate onto the radio using the screws supplied by the radio itself. Now this kit also does come with some spacers, so depending on your dash um, and how you wanna adjust the depth, we may need to include these. These just clip onto the back. So just kind of keep that in mind. Once we get this in the truck, if we feel like we need the spacers, we'll keep these around and uh, we can throw them on. If we end up using the spacers, this kit also comes with screws. So the factory screws may not reach anymore. So we'll use these in their place. So kind of keep that in mind. Don't get rid of these until we have confirmed the fitment of the radio. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our um, USB adapter so we can make that work. What we need to do is relocate the uh, Ford Sync USB from behind the glove box to where it can reach by the radio. And we'll use this adapter to accommodate to the factory port. We have our antenna adapter, which we'll get also plugged in. And that's about it. So let's head back over to the car and start getting everything installed. Okay, so next step here, we've actually popped down the glove box. You just push in this little side tab here. What that's gonna allow you to do is pop this all the way down to get access back behind it. As we look back here, we see this big black box. This is a part of the Ford Sync system and that wire coming out of it is our USB. So what we're gonna do is unplug that and reroute it over to the stereo cavity where we can utilize the USB input on the front of the dash bezel that's where it ends. So rerouting that to our new radio, we can utilize the factory USB for a nice clean stealth look. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug that and start rerouting. 
So I just went ahead and unplugged that there. As you can see, it's just a um, mini USB there. So our adapter that you, we showed you on the bench, we'll plug into that, and then the other one will plug into the back of the radio. So what we're gonna do is just start fishing that back towards our dash cavity. All right, so do, to do the aux modification to retain the factory aux port here, because this aux runs through the fourth sync system, and since we're not retaining sync, auxiliary plugs on our crux wiring harness adapter will not work um it just it's not a direct pass through so rather than trying to mess around with the sync system what we're going to do is just modify this harness i stripped back the split loom and exposed the wire here what we're going to do is actually just cut this harness off and from this point we'll run our own uh, wiring from this cut portion up to our radio so what we're gonna do is just cut this clean and head over to the bench and show you how we're gonna get this soldered up. Okay, so now we've retained the USB. Let's go ahead and retain the aux here. As you saw in the car, I went ahead and just cut the harness here. What we're gonna do is just strip back all four of these wires. And then additionally, I brought in an aux cable. What we're gonna do with this aux cable is we're just gonna cut one end off and the other end is going to run up to our radio so the end that we cut off we're going to wire into these ends and then uh, the other end goes into the aux input on the back of the radio okay so what we've done here is stripped it now all these loose strands it's going to be our negative here so what we're going to do is try to collect all those loose strands okay so we've got those all done so we have our main three wires but you notice over here there are four wires two of the wires that we're going to show you are grounds and then the other two is going to be our right and our left so so at this point the best way for us to figure out what goes where what wires to connect to let's actually just go ahead and connect the back of this in and then we're going to strip the ends on this this portion just like so and then what we're going to do is use a continuity meter now we have our set to like the dot with the three lines after it so we can find out what goes where so we're going to plug this in and start testing our wires so looks like that bottom one is a ground so these two these two are grounds because these ones don't do anything so we can combine these two together to wire into this one and then our red our red is to that blue, and our white should be to the last one. Yep, there we are. So what we're gonna do is make those connections. Okay, so we've made our connections here, and now we're gonna use some solder, solder them up, and then we'll move the heat shrink up and over the connections. So as these dry, we're gonna move our heat shrink tubes up and over those connections, just like so. And then from this point, we're gonna use our heat gun and shrink the tubes. Alright, so we have our aux harness all done at this point. Let's head over to the car and get it installed. Okay, so at this point, we need to start assembling the new radio here in the dash. Now, beforehand, you've already seen us relocate the USB cable from back behind the glove box. What we've done now is we've relocated it here. We've put our pack harness adapter in there, so that will plug into the USB on the back of the radio. Also, we connected our antenna adapter, so we got that all connected as well. That'll go into the back of the radio. And finally, for the aux that you saw us do the little custom mod for, we ran that up, and that'll plug into the aux input on the back of the radio. So that'll allow us to keep the factory aux and USB panel here on the dash bezel, which is awesome. And at this point, what we need to do is go ahead and connect our harness adapter that we assembled on the bench. And then just clip on in, plug in the little one, this one here, perfect. Now we do have our factory sub which we'll plug into. We tested before, since the aux goes through the sync system, this aux adapter actually won't work. So this will just hang out in the back of the dash. And then we need to connect our radio now. Okay, so we got it. the radio in place, super, super tight fit, but just push everything out of the way. We'll get a couple of screws in just to hold the radio in place. 
and then we'll do a test before we button up the rest of the panel. All right, let's go ahead and do a test, make sure everything's working. Dealerships where I'm giving you three thousand. All more right, killing... steering wheel controls are working great. Seek up, seek down. We can do our voice. Media should go between different sources. Yep, working great. Got our phone menu, perfect. We'll make sure we test all our other uh, inputs as well to make sure they're working. Um, at this point, let's go ahead and get our panel back on. Alright, that's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. We're also doing a backup camera on this truck, so if you want to see that, go ahead and check the description. We'll have that information as well as a card up above. Be sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.